We will begin with historic financials. In order to compare firms across industry and across time, we common size the income statement and balance sheet. Common size the income statement by dividing each year's items by the sales for that year and each year's balance sheet items by the total assets for that year. Now that we have common sized financial statements, we can see trends in performance over time. Next we will forecast the income statement. You will need to forecast sales before we generate the income statement. You can start with consensus estimates from a source like Bloomberg, FactSet, or Reuters. You can also get company guidance by reading through the earnings call transcripts in recent quarters. Finally, you can forecast yourself using long-term growth rates and news articles about industry trends. Different industries have different cycles. Some, like consumer discretionary firms, follow GDP. Others, like energy, follow the price of oil. Semiconductors and telecom firms follow trends driven by technology. A good assumption is to start with the business cycle and change as you learn about the industry-specific information. After you have the top line of your income statement complete, use the common sized income statement as a starting point to calculate the remaining items. You can use these cells at the top of the sheet to make adjustments to the average for each line. Some of you may be wondering, if we used a constant percent of sales for each line item, why don't we just apply the sales growth rate to net income? The answer is that this income statement is only the first step. Most likely, the financial ratios produced by this forecast will not be realistic. A more realistic forecast will require iteration. Look at the performance metrics and go back and adjust assumptions about each line item until you have a forecast that is both operationally feasible and have reasonably conservative estimates on growth and discount rates.